Hey guys, welcome to NFTX's 20th governance call that we host every first Wednesday of the month at 1600 UTC. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about what has been going on in the past month, or if you have any like specific questions or just want to take part in like uh, communal governance, then this is the place to be. Uh, there's going to be an open floor at the end of the call. So if anyone has anything specific that they do want to ask, please raise your hand and mention them in the chat. So we have like some more time to think about it and we can have a more productive discussion. Uh, Chop Chop is currently away. So it's Javery that's going to be covering uh, this week's in review. And uh, like he's been writing it. So like he knows the content as much as anyone else. So yeah. Uh, all right, uh, Alex, if you have some yeah, words. Sure. I'll just give some some intro words. Um, feels like a long time since our last meeting. It's probably been one of the busiest months for us so far. Uh, just getting V2 running and then migrating all the liquidity from V1 over to V2 um, and just getting users kind of uh, back into the swing of things. Um, it's pretty busy in Discord lately. But um, yeah, things are going pretty well. I do want to apologize to anyone listening into this later about the staking issues we've had. Uh, basically, a small bug that was causing it uh, difficulties for people to claim their rewards has been harder than we expected to fix. Um, I guess that's one of the one of the caveats of testing and production. But we're being super careful about the fix. Um, and it's probably going to take a couple more days than expected, I think. Uh, but we'll also make sure that everyone's made whole in terms of any losses during this time, um, like lost rewards. So um, yeah, I'll be doing some accounting this month to make sure that everyone gets all of the rewards that they have earned. And um, yeah, just since Chops away for the next few weeks, um, we're super busy um, with support and development, but we appreciate all of your patience. And uh, yeah, it's an exciting time and uh, feel free to drop by the Discord anytime. I'll pass it off to Javery. Cheers, Alex. Yeah, so each week we do uh, a weekly write-up on what's happened both uh, with the product uh, and what we've done in the past week and what we're looking to do in the next week, and then a few things which have been happening in the NFT space as well. So as Alex pointed out, there was some um, issues with the staking rewards. Um, so we've uh, paused those at the moment. Uh, we'll pause the mint and stake uh, for now and looking into that, and that should be up and running hopefully towards the end of this week. Uh, we made an update to the uh, homepage. So it's... Previously, we were pulling in all the old V1 uh, vaults and the prices based on those. So we've uh, overhauled that, and that's now pulling through all the NFTs from V2 and all the prices from V2 as well. So it's looking it's looking really healthy. It's looking good. Um, the team also pushed out the migration contract. So for anyone that holds uh, V1 tokens, uh, we've moved the inventory for a lot of those vaults across to V2 now and you can now go to the migration page. So on app.nftx.org slash migrate, you can go in there. It will detect what tokens you have from V1 and just give you a quick, simple UI to be able to migrate those tokens across to V2 as well. Uh, we've looked at a couple of performance improvements as well. So we track how the app is performing, um, and we're looking to, to make a couple of improvements on that over the next couple of months now that uh, a lot of the development the hardcore development stuff is um, is pretty much all wrapped up. So we've got uh, sub two second load pages, uh, page loads at the moment. So we're hoping to continue to improve those just to make it super snappy, on both desktop and mobiles as well. Um, and then this week for uh, what's happened in the NFT. So the currency, uh, all that stuff drops, but a rarity spreadsheet has been developed. Um, so you can go and check out whether or not your, uh, your currency, if you are lucky to be one of the 10,000 to get one, um, how rare that is uh, based on uh, some of the traits that it has. And you can now buy and sell those through the Henny marketplace. And I've seen them also trading through OpenSea as well. Um, there seemed to be a huge set of sales this week. Uh, we, uh, whether or not we kicked it off or not, but uh, we sold off two uh, zombies at 450 ETH a piece. Um, one of those was then sold a day later for 810 ETH. Uh, which is a pretty cool 360 ETH profit for someone over a couple of days. Um, there was an eight that sold for 1600 ETH for Gary V, and then another one was purchased for 2250 ETH 
as well a day later. Uh, the floor for the glyphs have been going um, up like crazy as well. So it looks like it's been going between like 254 and 280 ETH. Um, but that also, whether or not that kicked off uh, the big buy as well, but we saw a huge buy of uh, all the floor punks as well that were sitting out there. So someone nabbed 88 floor punks inside a single transaction um, by bribing, uh, using a 5 ETH bribe to make sure that all of those uh purchases went through in the single block so i didn't let anyone sort of see that they were being swept up and changed their prices as well which was pretty interesting uh so two pretty big uh drops as well with stoner cats which um uh, vitalik uh has been uh, got in with uh, ashton kutcher and miller kunis um that was a huge drop it went wrong and they had to drop it again the next night but sent gas crazy and the same with uh vogus as well they had a two two stage drop because Things went wrong on the first night, um, and they dropped it again the second. And the last bit is uh, Avastars, which has been running for a long time, and it's been a, a popular vault in NFTX uh, for a while now. Um, but this week, it's picked up in popularity as well because that project is now closed. So minting has stopped on all Avastars. So they've minted all 25,000, and they're only available on the secondary market um, from now. Uh, and then the last thing we do is we just always do a numbers update as well. So for the last week, uh, NFTX was up 122%. Uh, and over the last 30 days since our Gov call, it's been up uh, 130% and sitting around the 160 mark, I think, at the moment. Uh, but that's it for the weekly update. I will hand over to Nick to take us through the deck. Cool. Thanks, Fletch, Avery. Uh, right, let me get the screen share. So I'll put it on here. Okay, is that showing for everyone? Yep. <clears throat> okay, cool. So the purpose of this is just to get everyone up to speed with the direction that we're looking to take uh, the NFTX product, um, laying out sort of the high level plan as well as some of the detail that we're going to get into for the rest of the year. Um, so yeah, starting out. So just a recap of the NFTX goals from uh, a high level. So. Ultimately, it's TVL that we're we're driving for, um, and and we generate well, we ma maximize TVL through a couple of different routes. Uh, one is optimizing uh, for liquidity depth, and then also optimizing for uh, vault volume. So, the greater greater our liquidity, the more volume there can be, and therefore the more fees to people that are staking or providing inventory, and then the more uh, volume also attracts deeper liquidity. So if anyone's been paying attention to the NFTX vaults right now, uh, we've got multiple vaults and three-figure APRs that are driving genuine organic rewards to, to LPs that aren't subsidized by governance tokens or anything like that. Um, and we're the goal of the product is to really kind of aggressively go after things that optimize for liquidity depth and things that optimize for volume. So there are some features and uh, across product and protocol, which comes back to product um, that we're looking at. So on the product side, we've got uh, the marketplace, uh, which is the current app.nftx.org, uh, and that drives volume uh, for our inventory providers uh, that, that earns them fees. Uh, we've also got staking. So stakers come in and provide inventory, and they get 100% uh, uh, of the fees that are being driven by the marketplace. Then we have vault creation and potentially distribution. Kiwi's looking at some very interesting mechanics for distributing NFTs via an NFTX vault. And then we also have uh, like an SDK uh, that we're looking at. So um, a way to provide other developers a simple interface with using our uh, protocol. And then on the protocol feature side, uh, I'll just kind of skip over this. Um, it's kind of not really my area, but there's a lot of stuff coming that will tie into the product, particularly like most excitingly potentially is single-sided staking. So no more, um, well, users can choose to provide inventory without pairing it with ETH as an LP, um, which would be a much more simplified process. Um, we have small orders coming, thinking about people setting up uh, orders to buy certain NFTs within a collection. So like, for example, a punk, um, in the punk collection, someone could place an order to buy ho any hooded punk for, say, three punk, so three times uh, the floor price of a punk, 
and that would uh, you know, be a much easier price to reason about, um, and people don't need to worry about exchange rate risk of sort of the price in ETH moving too much. Uh, then we have Dutch auctions where uh, NFTs added to the vaults uh, will potentially start at a high price and then drop down over time, and then we've got concentrated liquidity. So looking at V3 style um, AMMs where uh, inventory providers and liquidity providers can uh, put in inventory without putting up anywhere near as much ETH as they would need to, um, to generate the same amount of fees. Uh, so that would help with our volume. Um, and then dynamic fees, which is to do with incentivizing vaults to have um, healthy levels of liquidity uh, not just inventory, but also like ETH paired liquidity and then DAO boosts. So the reason why the punk vault is particularly high in the APR at the moment is because the DAO is providing uh, liquidity for the punk token without taking rewards. And I think that's a strategy that we want to kind of more actively pursue moving forward. So yeah, NFTX v1, the original vision uh, was a sort of product ecosystem where we'd have this separation of products between LPs who are kind of sophisticated users and then retail users who are just the people kind of driving the volume coming in and purchasing NFTs. Um, so these would be two different products that or multiple products that would sort of serve different styles and different brands and they would have marketed sort of to each of those user types. Uh, but the issues with that is that uh, we have a relatively small team, um, extremely fast to, to ship team. Um, and but ultimately limited by resource and, and having multiple products to maintain uh, would be a, a, a challenge that would become even worse as we look to go multi-chain um, with having multiple code bases on multiple chains. And also the separation uh, reduces cross-selling, which I'll come on to a bit more uh, in a second. So in sort of the next version, or well, the version we're building for to, as um, the year closes out, is a single product for everything. So um, having all this stuff on, on one on one site, on one domain, um, that includes like an integrated homepage as well. Uh, and also focusing on the idea that retail can also be inventory providers. Um, being an LP is a little bit complex, but providing inventory on single-sided inventory is, is very simple to understand and, and retail can earn rewards that way. Uh, and then also facilitate third parties to build on top of our high volume and high, high liquidity foundation. So originally we were sort of thinking, oh, we can build an aggregator, like a swapping aggregator that would hook into other other inventories. Um, but actually that's now much more of a of something that we would like third parties to, to build while we focus on our kind of core um, inventory optimization. So how do we achieve all of this? So it's gonna look something like this. Um, much more simplified navigation. So we're not talking about terms that retail don't understand, you know, vaults and, and redeeming and minting, uh, but instead kind of hiding those away for sophisticated users while focusing much more on the retail side through uh, shopping experience. So this would look uh, a bit more like this. So integrated homepage uh, makes it much quicker to, to browse the site. So you connect when you're on the homepage and you're connected throughout the whole experience. Uh, connected to your wallet throughout the whole experience. Um, making much more use of explainers because right now NFTX, the app is is very much focused on users that understand what they're doing. And that, that's the same in the shop where we want it to be a retail paradise. Right now you have to understand that you need to buy V tokens or vault tokens to then purchase an NFT from a, or redeem an NFT from a vault. And it's just not a smooth experience for retail. Um, then having an inventory page to help people find new yield opportunities and to monitor activity and, and their own positions and the rewards they're earning. And also on the create collection side, being able to publish and distribute uh, NFTs through the, someone's own created collection. Um, search is, is something that's, that's clearly missing and that I include like filters in that as well for, for browsing vaults. And then also profiles, so to make it a much more sociable experience where users can kind of share their profiles and all their inventory and uh, stake positions and everything else is, is visible, all powered by ENS. Um, so keeping it keeping it decentralized and, and moving away from any kind of database driven profile stuff. So for developers, we'll be looking at this nftx.js MVP. Um, so something simple with some, a handful of simple endpoints uh, that developers can hook into. Uh, what I think would be very cool about this is it will allow us to create a demo for using NFTX 
uh, as a as a shop uh, with a simple sort of buying and selling front end that we can then open source so other people can then see how easy it is to tap into uh, NFTX inventory. And then the idea that retail can be inventory providers as well. Uh, so single-sided inventory provision removes like, all the complexities uh, of staking. And eventually we could look at upselling or kind of cross-selling uh, single-sided retail into being more on the more valuable liquidity providing side. Uh, and by combining all of these products into one experience, uh, we, can, we can tackle this a lot more easily and, and helps optimize for inventory. So yeah, that's uh, all those ticked off. So how do we get there? Closing out the year, uh, we are going to have two new versions to roll out. One that focuses on increasing volume and fees, and the other that focuses on increasing inventory. So first of all, on uh, just becoming feature complete and increasing volume of fees, we're looking to uh, excuse me, we're looking to sh uh, integrate homepage and shift to NFTX.io potentially. Um, we're also looking at buys apps, uh, which will simplify the um, shopping experience completely. Uh, global search, that's absolutely essential. Uh, mobile optimization is another thing that's absolutely essential. Vault inventory filters as well, so people can actually break down metadata on the assets they're shopping for. Um, single asset sharing, so pe people being able to share the assets that they have. Uh, th that they want to purchase with other other users, and then up updating navigation, just reducing term like the t complex terminology. So creating like a the first step towards a much more retail friendly experience. And then on the inventory side, um, so the second rollout would do is a, an overhaul to how we how we uh, display inventory and staking. So this would involve single sided staking, which we want to launch as soon as possible. There's just some protocol work to be done there. Um, also looking at entirely new inventory template, allowing users to look at activity within vaults and the various yields that are available with the idea that people actually will be starting to use NFTX without necessarily having much interest in the NFTs themselves, but much, much more interested in just the yield that they can earn by um, participating in inventory prov provision. Um, and then, yeah, creating collections and distribution. So particularly focusing on that distribution side, if and when um, we're able to, to implement that and update the navigation as well. So yeah, beyond that, we've got user profiles that we want to look at, smart orders, which I think is super exciting if we can uh, get those in sort of in, in the iterations after those two. And then even looking at our own AMM or how we might work with concentrate liquidity and the various other kind of much further down the road stuff. So when we get to sort of a V3, the goal really is to become like a self-contained marketplace and inventory hub for retail and experienced users. So yeah, that that the marketplace is our focus. We want to become a, a ultimately an aggregator as well. Um, although that's not a short-term goal, that, that is something we want to become, just a place you can go to purchase any NFT and with instant liquidity for most of them. Um, so we want to have a brand that strikes the balance between these users. So we've got a retail friendly shopping experience, but we're also looking to cater to power users and inventory providers of which most of the team are also. So um, yeah, tackling both those, those users. Um, and yeah, that concludes. So I think now might be a good time for questions and discussion around how this might look. Um, I'll just I'll just hop in really quick if you don't mind, Nick, and just yeah, sure. say um, that that was great. Um, I've, I've already seen the presentation before, so I kind of knew it was coming. But um, I'm huge support of everything you got there, and yeah, can't thank you enough for being all over this. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. And if anyone else has any questions, um, I guess we can open it up here. Uh, I think, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. There were no questions in chat, though, so I, I think things are pretty clear. And I, I'm, I'm not sure there. Um, one thing I'll, I'll bring up now, um, if you don't mind, Nick, um, just a question for you. I, I know I've asked you this on the side. Is like what you think about us having like a coins page. Um, I asked Chop about this too. I, in hindsight, I probably think it's, it's kind of a bad idea because uh, Chop was saying how you know, it's not really our main use case, but basically um, 
to put it simply, when people ask me like what NFTX does, uh, my explanation usually begins by me explaining how we have these vault tokens, which are like fungible versions of NFTs. Um, and then how we leverage that to create like liquidity and inventory for retail users. Uh, so like, I, I wonder if there's a point to having like a coin section on the home, on the nav bar, or maybe that's something better to just keep on the homepage like we have now. Uh, it's just like another side, right? Like instead of looking at vaults as, as inventory, you look at them as like uh, an index fund, even though we don't use that term anymore. Yeah. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I like personally I'm I'm always looking at the price of the tokens as well and checking the homepage and everything else. Um it, it doesn't kind of because it doesn't really hit those goals of like liquidity and volume, it, mm -hmm. it volume in the sense of like fault turnover. Um it, it's like a nice to have, but not something I think could I mean it could potentially live somewhere. Oh no, yeah, um, I feel I feel you. But it, yeah, I mean, certainly that's a use case that we start out with, right? Like you could come in, you could buy a punk token and get exposure to, to the mm -hmm. to the price of punk. And just looking at the prices and stuff, it's like a nice land. But yeah, I, I get it. Yeah. It's, it's not our it's not our primary focus, which is a good point. Yeah. So no, it, it like it. There's two goals, right? There's goals to attract liquidity, and then there's goals to attract like volume. So this wouldn't really achieve those goals but there's still a user like that out there that needs to do this or that wants to do this so it's not like the the main thing that we should pursue but i completely agree that it's like i think it's important personally and i would use it as well so yeah i just think about like um like about users intuitively getting our product like um a lot of people you know they don't really understand what exactly it is we do and it's not even very easy to explain in a sen single sentence um and like you know if you see on the nav bar like coins nfts you kind of get that there's this duality between the coins and the nfts themselves um so i actually have that's a good okay, point yeah. for me i had i think three massive glasses of wine last night and started writing uh, <laughs> nice. my paper um, nice. in reaction to this point in particular, um, which is really about the segmentation of kind of like core users in conjunction with how we're going to drive towards these goals of kind of increasing, um, mm -hmm. you know, liquidity and optimizing for that. And I think that what I landed on is the idea of maybe it's best to gate things as NFTX Pro or similar and really focus on the funnel of driving like expert users to those places while also increasing kind of the discoverability for kind of new users in crypto which a lot of people in the nft space especially with how we're going to be at the front end are to like discover those additional features so they have so the you're not thinking two different products though are you no, not two different okay. products at all. It's more of just like a way to frame things and frame the functionality in a way that doesn't distract the kind of beginner users, mm -hmm. but also allows them to kind of coexist. Yeah, it's an interesting point. Um, I don't think we can use the term NFTX Pro since we have a, a false competitor at NFTX.pro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can. Yeah. I just I, I called it that to really. I see what I see what you mean though. It's like like an easy way of kind of uh, signaling to users like, hey, this is a, like a, an advanced feature. Um, and yeah. we, um, that's that's an interesting thought. Yeah, I think that like what I like in in writing this, doing this like exercise, what I realized is like the biggest strength is the no bid aspect of everything here, and so maintaining that by by not overcomplicating it for these kind of core beginner users it's going to be pretty mm -hmm. important and if they see all this other stuff they could easily get quickly lost and we've just introduced a ton of friction yeah. yeah um what are your thoughts on on nick's like nav bar like segregating like you know you have shopping and then you also like inventory is like separate more like for the pro users um i think it could work I, what i what i'm worried about is like it's kind of like you know um <laughs> really in the weeds, but I just think that making sure we don't distract the beginner users is going to be pretty critical. And mm -hmm. they start seeing things like, you know, liquidity provision or staking and vault creation that's pretty complicated and we haven't optimized that flow, like they could easily get lost before actually interacting on the volume side. And yeah. that's a pretty important goal. 
it's, it's funny because um, lately I've kind of felt like um, I would like there to be more information all over the website, like mm. <laughs> like notifications and like warnings and like advisory, just because we get so many support questions, often answer asking similar things. Mm. Um, so I guess it's this balance between, you know, you don't want to overwhelm users, but you also want to give them um, answers to their questions without them needing to go to Discord. Um, so something that I think that complicates this like much more in the crypto space is that like users or like most expert users or most like knowledgeable users like have learned from like their own personal experience from using like different like web3 apps like most you don't really watch like a youtube tutorial like oh how do i use metamask to interact mm -hmm. with this card contract so like you're kind of trying to solve a problem that's not really solvable because mm -hmm. like they can't learn unless it's complicated <laughs> which is very like it's, it's it's like it's horrible because you how do you attract new users right it's just a question of time yeah um I think, yeah what do you think yeah. Nick? we've been talking i mean a the lot shopping about experience it. there's questions around shopping because it's yeah the whole i've got to buy a token what like and then like the extra 0 0.05 to then purchase this thing yeah we're gonna it's get, not gonna obvious all that. yeah yeah mm -hmm. like buy zaps will fix that right and then and then when they when they go to inventory like if we've got single siders, then that should be really easy to understand. I, I saw a question in Discord today around like LPing, and so I really just didn't know like what was involved in LPing, and, and was really confused by that. And like part of me just, I mean, people are that is just gonna that's gonna happen kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we can't be expected to kind of educate everyone about like the up like the benefits and and risks of of LPing. It's like Uniswap that way. Yeah, yeah, like Uniswap. I'm well, sure they, so, were, they were in, in that So one one thing well, with Uniswap is that it's so simple. Like there's not much to do like on the like initial like swap website. If you go on the info page, like you can easily get lost. So like that's where I completely agree with you, Nick. Like what we need to do is basically make things as simple as possible. And like what what are the goals and like what what does each transaction do and like reduce that to the first principle of like what the user wants mm -hmm. what should he get and like what does what can he understand from just seeing like basic information and processing what he needs or shouldn't do right yeah yeah, yeah. in an ideal world <laughs> yeah I, i'm totally in agreement i mean i think we all want to simplify everything as much as possible what i'm and I'm like happy to be wrong on this point, you know, but I think that we are trying to create a double sided marketplace basically. And like, that's going to require different messaging, different kind of funnels and messaging around those funnels to really drive towards these goals. And like I, what, Oh, sorry. Go ahead, JB. No, no, go for it. Uh, I was just going to say like one, another thing similar to that, that I've dealt with in discord lately is helping some people create vaults and realizing that these users, um, they really don't realize what they're getting into. Um, mm -hmm. Like they don't realize how much, how many transactions it's going to be, how much it, it's going to be in gas, how you need at least 10 items to kind of make the vault usable and how you need to pair those 10 items with ether in sushi swap to give a decent liquidity. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like, you, so I, I kind of feel like at this point, even though it sucks, it'd be great if we just kind of have warnings like on the create vault page, like even if it links out to some blog post or an FAQ or something, mm -hmm. um, just as kind of like a stopgap for now to kind of give the beginner users the warnings they need when they get kind of away from that easy functionality. Um, yeah. And then we can we can figure out how to make it more elegant and intuitive right. um, you know, and yeah, during the rest of the year. I think that mirrors my point a little bit too, which is like these things should all coexist and kind of live mm -hmm. play with each other, but we need to be cautious of the messaging or how we split navigation for those things. I think the best yeah. way like calling it like NFTX Advance or whatever that is, so that mm -hmm. if you're just there to buy or sell, you can take advantage of the fact that you can do that with no bids and do it very quickly without having to worry about these other things and get mm -hmm. distracted by them. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, um, and the last, last thing I'll say quickly, sorry, Finesse. Um, I just want to clarify for anyone listening in, um, Nick used the term buy zaps. So basically by the term buy zaps, we mean um, we're going to make it easier for people to just pay with Ether. And then behind the scenes, their Ether will get converted to the vault token, and then it will buy the, the NFT that they want. So it just streamlines the buying flow, basically. Sorry, go ahead, Finesse. 
Yeah, so I, I, what I wanted to say is like, I feel like it's like Moses and the Great Divide. So like there's <laughs> a lot of users like who know absolutely nothing. And there's a lot of u users like who don't need information. Like you could give them like NFTX V1 and they can figure everything out, right? Um, so focusing on the user who knows the least is what we need to do because the others don't need help, right? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, that said, that said, just I think an important point on like on the shopping on the shopping experience, I totally agree. We do not want shopping to be at all complicated. But I think from an inventory provision point of view, um, it's kind of twofold. It's like um, the complexity to put someone off from like putting their funds at risk is probably not a bad thing. And also the like, and it's it, it's maybe it sounds bad, but someone that might want that LP, like someone who might not really understand what LPing is and have lots of questions, um, maybe like providing like a really small amount of inventory. So you know, from purely from a commercial point of view, they're not kind of like the highly valuable users to then make sure that we're catering for them. If you know what mm -hmm. I mean, like I, I, I always think minimal viable complexity is is key, and we shouldn't mm -hmm. make something more complex than it needs to be. But at the same time, I don't want to like dumb it down to the point of like not being clear to more experienced users that may have like you know multiple millions to put in to a venture Absolutely. yeah i i meant this for the sorry go for it all right thanks uh i meant this like for the for the buy side like for lps like to me they're all experts so like we know how to cater to them already and yeah. like we can still improve that and one other thing i wanted to say like before you go jb um one problem like one bait might be like the apr on the like page and people might think oh like i can get a return from doing all this but like if you're not staking enough the gas is going to be way more yeah like a, an unexperienced user doesn't know that until he actually has to pay the gas yeah no that's a good point um wondering if we should call the meeting there or <laughs> um yeah i just want to reiterate um Nick, this is all really excellent stuff and really exciting, you know, what this vision is. I'm obviously coming out this after having seen the deck yesterday, so I had some more uh, granular thoughts, but overall, like, really great stuff. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. double double what JV said there. And, and really tri triple it because, like, he's done this on his own. Like, mm -hmm. it's not a team effort. Like, everyone working on this is, like, Nick Nick's baby, right? So... <laughs> <laughs> it's been incredible like yeah it's been a lot of fun working here over the last six Be months i gotta say like i've had a ton of fun beauty of dows yeah yeah all right um should we call it yep my my it's, ADD it's all right with me in after about 37 <laughs> minutes <laughs> thank you to everyone for joining uh it's always a pleasure to have people like here for governance and yeah uh next meeting will be on the 1st of September, I believe. Awesome. Hey, All right. thanks everyone. See ya. Thanks guys. See ya.